Well everybody, I hope you're enjoying this new series of the top 10 features of Vector It's Architect 2023. Now the next new feature we're going to look at is the amazing Offset Edge tool. This is a fantastic brand new 3D tool that will really enhance your 3D modeling and freeform modeling using Vectorworks. So if you're still using things like SketchUp, take a look at Vectorworks. The workflow is so much better, I can promise you. So with that, let's let you enjoy the video and thanks for watching as ever. Quick look at the new edge offset tool. So what I'm going to do is just kind of map out a very simple uh, building in front of you here, just using the push pull that Vectorworks has had for quite a while. Also, I really love the new uh, automatic face that was introduced a few years ago in Vectorworks, which just allows us very seamlessly to draw directly on those faces and add to the object. So you can see if those of you who are using SketchUp already and you're kind of quite happy with that sort of push-pull workflow, Vectorworks actually has all of this with the kind of Vectorworks accuracy as well as the history-based modeling. So what I mean by that is you can double click, access that step of history. For example, you could duplicate that over there. And then when you come back out, both of those will be subtracted. Okay, now none of that is new, but what I would like to show you now is the new Edge Offset tool. So this is a very nice tool. It's got a couple of different modes. So what we can do, for example, at the beginning is select an edge and basically offset this edge. But if we do want to, we can actually hold Shift down and select both edges. So you can see I can bring both of those down 300 mil, and that then enables me to either push and pull either way. Let's go out, say 500 mil, just to create a kind of little roof projection there. So let me just do that again on this side. So we're going to select both those edges, just come down, say 300 mil, all with that nice accuracy, and let's come out, say 500 mil again. Fantastic. Okay, so you can see it's very easy to kind of create sort of volumes and modules, things like this. Now let's have a look at the next mode of the Edge Offset tool. Really love this. So what you can do is select an edge, but this time all the connected edges will also be offset. So you can see I can actually offset all of those together and actually push through and subtract into my project as I want to, all the way through. Now what's really nice is if I double click into the history, I can actually bring back the piece that was the subtraction piece. So if I'm clever, I can actually uh, cut that piece out and basically remove it altogether if I want to. Let's leave it in and basically let's just bring it back again. Now I'm just going to use uh, not a new tool, but one of my favorite ones called the extracting tool, just to extract that edge again. Okay, so I'm kind of finished with this now. And now I can use this, it's just a polygon, to basically extrude, say, uh, let's say 20 mil, just so I've got a nice big sheet of glass. So let's pop down and select some glass material if we've got some. So I'm just gonna go to my render tab, go to texture, and basically search for glass. Let's see if we've got some available. So I can always use the search dialog here. Remember the resource manager is one of the nicest aspects of Vectorworks. It really is very seamless. So you can see we've got a kind of glass wall there. Okay, so let's just take a bit more look at this edge offset tool in detail. So as well as extracting uh, sort of planar edges here, so let's say that I just want to go minus 50 mil in there, and maybe I want to use my texture tool to put some solar panels in there. So I've got a really nice little library of some solar panels that I've created on my previous project here. And with a single click, you'll notice that I can kind of basically embed those into the roof there. Let's just do the same on that side again. So we'll click, we'll go in 300 mil. And again, let's suppress that, go minus 50. And we'll just get our texture tool and click. Good, so you can see the new per face texturing is also a very nice aspect of to works as well. Now what if we've got um, non-planar shapes? Okay so for example let's just say there was a circle chopped through this wall here. So with the edge offset tool now um, what you can actually do is select the edge offset, push out a little bit and you'll notice that it's quite happy to deal with, let's do 100 mil, pushing out that kind of non-planar face as it were. So if I actually go in this way, let's sort of see if we can do that. Yeah, okay, and then I can actually basically push this surface in here, generate a bit of some glass in that little opening if I wanted. Now do remember, 
using this lovely tool here, I can select all my lovely materials. Let's go for a nice stainless steel and just essentially paint these surfaces with any kind of texture overrides that I would like on my model. So this is a very cool workflow uh, using the new texturing tools. And let's see what materials we want. Let's say I just want some nice brick on that surface there. Now, don't worry if the brick is the wrong way around. Sometimes it does map incorrectly. That's very easy to sort. All you need to do is go over here to the texture overrides there. And often if you just auto align plane, that will basically sort it out. I've still got the ability to change things like the scale as well. And also things like rotation as well is another option if I wanted. So a little quick play with that. Let's undo. Um, I just want to do a tiny bit more work on this texture tool and show you a really cool feature here. So I'm going to basically color in these uh, roof panels here. Let's kind of slide around. I'm going to hold control D key down and spin just so I can do that. Now what I want to show you is if I go command R um, I've got this really nice sort of textures pack with all these lovely textures here. I can show you that a bit later but if I want to select something from there what I can actually do which is very cool is if I hold down the command key you'll notice that I can actually replace a material. Now if I do want to I can also replace a material with command and shift and basically that will replace all of those materials all of the grey is replaced with that single material. So I really really love this feature let me just show you this on the uh, cladding as well. Let's go for, so say, some nice dark timber cladding. So I hold Command and Shift down, and then when I replace that side, if I spin around to the other side, that will have been replaced too. It's a very, very cool feature. So I really love the new Texture Per Face tool, and it's definitely something I'd recommend uh, having a look at, particularly if you've got a nice sort of set of textures and things that you can use to create your project. Now, just on this Edge Offset tool, uh, let's just focus on this a tiny bit more. I just want to show you something really, really cool. So basically, if I've got a circle and I use the Edge Offset tool, non-planar as well as planar surfaces. So these are planar surfaces here. You can see no problem with kind of offsetting those. But for example, if I bring one up here, this is non-planar. This means that I can actually bring this surface out um, as much as I need or in. So it makes it very easy for you to kind of break that curve and actually kind of stretch it out. Now, I'm not really sure what I've modeled there, but it was just to show you how simple that is. And don't forget the wonderful tools, things like the fillet tool. And these are absolutely fantastic when you just want to basically round off and sort of fillet something off. What I really love about these tools is this history based uh, adaptability where you can just type in new numbers. And I really like the fact you can modify and highlight. So if we click modify, it steps back in to allow me to select these additional edges and then reapply to fill it. So here we go, a little kind of fountain or some other kind of feature. But this makes really modeling and base texturing with Vectorworks very, very rapid now, uh, particularly if you've got a really kind of nice texture pack available. As I say, let's just go for this. You can see it's just quite easy to basically paint these surfaces just like you would do in any other modeling software. So it works really great both on non-planar and planar surfaces to really, really rapidly create a kind of idea. So what do you think, guys? Uh, I think this is a fantastic new tool, the Edge Offset tool, and it's definitely one that I've been using quite heavily in my new workflow. And I find um, it just sort of speeds up a lot of the processes that you could do before, but it just makes it a lot easier. I love the way you can kind of just tab in that accuracy kind of use that Vectorworks accuracy to increase what we're doing. But don't forget, if you don't like it, you can double click in the last step. You can remove that last step of history and then back out again. Excellent. So that's it for the Edge Offset tool. But one of my favorite new modeling features, as you know, I love 3D modeling in Vectorworks. It's absolutely brilliant, but even better now than it was before. Just before we leave the Offset Edge tool, um, I just want to talk a bit about some of the things I've been slightly fascinated with recently, some really tall buildings that I've seen both in DZine and also uh, when I visited London for the Construction Computing Awards Ceremony. So I took a few nice photos and these were interesting. Um, so basically, here's a couple of little projects that I've just been messing around with just to show you how easy it is to make sort of cool tool buildings with VectorX. And I really just want to finish this off by showing you the edge offset tool in this context. So what I'm going to do is basically go ahead and draw myself another tall building. Let's just sort of push and pull that up to the same kind of height. And let's basically get my, first of all, my deform tool. 
what I'm going to do is basically just spin that model around. You can see how nice and easy that is to give it a bit of a twist and a rotation. I'm also going to go on give it a taper as well. I really like this tool. I think it's great just to give it a bit of a taper. So that's kind of a nice little kind of interesting form for our project. But this is really where I want to show you how amazing the offset edge tool is. So let's go back onto this mode here and select the edge and just offset in, let's say about one meter. And let's just push back in again. Let's go minus one meter just to kind of push that back into the project. And you can see this a bit more clearly if I actually kind of get my nice textures. Let's get my kind of uh, sort of panel type textures and apply that to that surface. So look at that. Absolutely wonderful modeling and really good to develop these early stage concepts. And I just love creating these tool buildings just for fun. Probably not projects that I'll ever be able to create. Let me just show you one more. So to do that, I'm just going to go to my home screen. Uh, really nice. And you can see I've got a little project here. And this is one that I created before. So this was one, again, where I was inspired by a building that I saw in London with this amazing sort of facade. And basically, very rapidly, was able to kind of model up this rather complicated facade. Just sort of good idea. I think it's a great way to improve your skills. Just look around and see in the environment and just sort of see if you can emulate them and copy them. So definitely something I'll be doing more tutorials on soon.